Hi, I'm Melba Pearson, and this is The Breakdown. If you like the content in this video, like, comment, subscribe, and share with your friends. So I'm back with some breaking news around the death of Roger Fortson. Uh, for those of you who've been following this case, and for those who are kind of new to this uh, particular case, this was an airman, uh, a gentleman who was in the Air Force serving our country. He resided in Florida, and a police officer responded to his home as a result of a call regarding domestic violence and ended up shooting him dead. So, update on this, breaking news, Okaloosa County Sheriff Eric Aiden, who is the department where all of this happened, he fired Deputy Eddie Duran last week. So, reason why that's so huge, many times we don't actually see a deputy get fired as a result of actions they took on the job. This was one of those cases where there is a lot of groundswell around whether or not this was excessive use of force. Uh, Airman Fortson did answer the door with his weapon in his hand, but it was pointed at the ground and he had his hand up in the position like, wait, don't shoot. I just didn't know who was at the door. The deputy opened fire. Now, what was interesting is that a sheriff's internal investigation uh, done by the Internal Affairs Division released a statement on Friday concluding that Mr. Fortson, who is the victim in this case, did not make any hostile attacking movements and therefore the former deputy's use of deadly force was not objectively reasonable. So as I had mentioned before in other videos, the Florida Department of Law Enforcement is the one that's heading the investigation around whether or not the deputy used excessive force and whether or not the deputy should then face criminal charges as a result. That has not concluded, but the internal investigation within the department, as you know, just about every police department has an internal affairs division, whether it's a group of people or one, but they have someone that kind of leads up their internal investigations. That is what led to the firing of the deputy. That internal investigation basically came to the conclusion he had no reason to shoot him. We all saw the body cam video. If you haven't, definitely check it out. It is disturbing, so trigger warning. But the series of events, the way that occurred, I think most observers looked at it. I know first thing I thought when I looked at it was this shooting was not justified. Again, he did not give the victim time to even respond, to put down the weapon. And there was definitely a question as to whether or not his life, him being the deputy, his life was in danger. So Further continuing on some of the statements that have come out around this firing, the sheriff came out and made a statement as well. He said that this tragic incident should never have occurred and the objective facts do not support the use of deadly force as appropriate as an appropriate response, excuse me, to Mr. Fortson's actions. Mr. Fortson did not commit any crime. By all accounts, he was an exceptional airman and individual. So again, reiterating what we saw on that body cam footage. He wasn't committing a crime. He was in his own home. He heard banging on the door and he responded with a weapon in his hand for whatever reason, but at the same token, it was not pointed at the officer and he was not acting in, aggr in an aggressive manner towards the officer. Now, some other new details came out as a result of the investigation so far. First off, we now know, learn the name of the deputy who up until this point, his name was not released, which is normal in these cases. Normally the investigation proceeds and then once there's been some sort of decision, namely firing or criminal charges, then the name is released. So we learned that the deputy involved in this shooting and killing of Roger Fortson on May 3rd is a law enforcement veteran. Eddie Duran uh, began his career as a military police officer in the Army. He was hired by an Oklahoma police department in 2015 after he was discharged from the military. He then joined the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office in July 2019, but then he resigned two years later. He then came back about 11 months ago and here we are, he's now out of a job. Also, other interesting information that came out about this case. The apartment complex where Roger Fortson lived was about eight miles from his base. And he was based at Hurlburt 
field. And he was assigned to the 4th Special Operations Squadron as a special missions aviator. And he was basically serving on what they call a Ghost Rider gunship. So pretty technical, pretty intense work that he was doing for the Air Force, which again, just really spoke to his dedication to this country and just made his, his killing even more senseless. And one of his roles, very interestingly, was to load the plane's cannons during battles. And he earned an air medal with with combat device, which is typically awarded for after 20 flights in a combat zone or conspicuous valor or achievement on a single mission. Now, what he did specifically to earn it, I don't know if we'll ever know if it's classified. I hope it will be declassified if it is so that we can all know and celebrate his legacy even more for whatever he did to receive that award of valor. Now, again, reiterating that Fortson had no criminal record. You could not serve in the Air Force in that capacity if you did. And another interesting point, he had no guests that afternoon. So if there was any question as to whether or not, well, there was sounds of a domestic violence disturbance in that particular apartment. Maybe it wasn't him. Maybe it was somebody else that was there earlier. That wasn't the case. He was purely home alone, speaking to his girlfriend on FaceTime. And per his girlfriend, he was playing a video game. Now, another interesting aspect of this is that 911 calls showed that there was a history of a different apartment in that building having law enforcement responses for various issues, including domestic violence. Apparently, police officers have responded over 10 times to that other apartment in the same building as Roger Fortson's apartment. Not Roger Fortson's apartment, right? Police have never had to respond to his apartment previously, but there was a different apartment that apparently had a lot of calls for service. So again, that leads me to ask, if he, the deputy gets to the scene, the person that met him, the woman that met him, allegedly from the leasing office, again, we're not positive as to who she is or what her connection is, but it appears that she was someone from the leasing office. She said, I heard a disturbance, but I'm not sure what apartment it's coming from. I would think that as part of the dialogue, as the officer is responding to the scene, trying to get you know a little bit more history, there would be some heads up in terms of, hey, we've responded a bunch of times to this particular apartment, so keep that in the back of your mind. Something. like I, I feel like that's information that should have been communicated, and maybe that breakdown in communication is also what caused the death of Roger Fortson. Hopefully, the department will look at their communications and figure out whether or not there was more information that could have been given in advance to have prevented this from happening. What else is interesting is the statements that ex-deputy Eddie Duran made to investigators as this case was progressing. He said that he fired because he saw aggression in the airman's eyes and he was standing there thinking, I'm about to get shot. I'm about to die. It is him or me at this point and I need to, I need to act as opposed to react, he told the investigators. So again, very disturbing because if you look at the footage, it gives a full frontal view of Airman Fortson and he didn't seem particularly aggressive. Again, he had his hand up like this, his gun pointed towards the ground and literally the deputy didn't even give him a moment to act, react, speak, apologize, anything. He just cut him down dead with six rounds that basically ended up killing him. So still interesting that he said that, but again, not supported by the evidence. We saw in the video that the deputy pounded on the door, but also then afterwards stepped out of sight so that if Airman Fortson walked to the peephole and looked outside, he wouldn't see that a police officer was out there. That again, made it reasonable for Airman Fortson to be concerned as to who was on the other side of the door, especially if he did not hear that this person was law enforcement. The deputy did not announce himself as law enforcement until after knocking several times. So again, it's not like the first time he knocked, he said, I'm law enforcement, sheriff's department opened the door. He knocked, didn't say anything, and then knocked again, and then identified himself. So again, you have a situation where the airman was not clear who was at the door and responded accordingly. 
Also, you saw in the video, and I did note that in a previous discussion on this case, that the deputy stood outside the door before knocking. And we all heard on the video that there was no sound, right? So there's no arguing, there was no screaming, there was no crying. All you really heard was literally birds and crickets. So again, this may have been an indication he was at the wrong door because there's nothing going on inside. So that I think played into the decision to fire him and also will play into whether or not his actions were reasonable at the time. So in conclusion for all of this, the firing clears the way for criminal charges. The question will be whether or not the police union gets involved. Oftentimes there's arbitration for the deputy to be able to get their job back. We're not sure if that's going to happen in this case, but at the end of the day, a police officer is not allowed just to shoot somebody if there's no real threat. And just because you have a gun does not equate a threat. It's what you're doing with the gun. So if he's holding the gun in a downward position and not pointed at the deputy, it's a harder argument for the deputy to make that he was in fear for his life, as opposed to if the gun had been up or if he had been waving the gun around, he being Airman Fortson, something along those lines. So this investigation is continuing. We'll see what the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, FDLE, comes back with if they decide that charges would be appropriate. The charges that could be filed could be second degree murder. It could be manslaughter. But again, it all depends on whether or not the FDLE could find enough evidence to substantiate the fact that this shooting was not reasonable. All right, I will keep you posted. I'm Melba Pearson, and this was The Breakdown. Take care. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, aka the Florida Lawman, here on the fastest growing true crime channel, True Crime MTN. And we'll see you next time.